So our last speaker is um, Dom Siriani um, from the University of Richmond, and he is actually going to go over the real logistics and nuts and bolts of joining the cyber education community and how, what our contributor guidelines are and how you would really go about the process of submitting a new lab. Um, so Dom, um, we're ready when you are. Um, thanks very much for everybody sticking around until the end of the, the meeting. Um, I know I've had a, a great time seeing everybody again. It's been way too long since we've all gotten together, but hopefully the discussion that we've we've all been having today keeps keeps us keeps us going. So I'm going to talk a little bit about cipher education in terms of how to contribute to it. And at first, what I'm going to do is kind of rehash some stuff that Ashley already talked about, but a little bit more specifically about what the organization of the GitHub repositories are, as well as how to access the instructor, the instructor materials, which there have been a lot of questions in the chat about already, um, before moving on to the real nuts and bolts of contributing to Cypher, uh, Cypher education. Okay, so Cypher education is kind of partitioned in three different areas. There's the website, which Ashley showed us how to get to by clicking on the Cypher education link on scicode.org, which contains a description of all of the different labs that we have available, um, what the target audience is, what kind of prerequisite knowledge needs to be included. It's a really great resource for anybody who's interested in exploring what we have available. But as far as accessing this material, we have a GitHub organization. So those of you who are familiar with um, the way that Sci4 itself is set up, Sci4 is its own GitHub organization. It has repositories that it maintains and um, we do too. We are our own GitHub organization. Is on. Have... It's... Thanks. Uh, we have um, repositories that we maintain and this is how we're able to make sure that access to the different repositories is kind of kept close to the best. And the reason is because Obviously, we're interested in helping people to instruct students in the classroom. And for folks that are actually, you know, taking classes, they just need to have access to the skeleton lab instructions or the skeleton Jupyter notebooks. And they don't need to know what the learning objectives are necessarily, but they also definitely don't need to know the answers beforehand. And so, we have a public facing um, repository just called Cypher Education that has everything that would be good for the public. And then we have a separate Cypher Education instructor repository that has all of the things that the instructors would uh, need to have access to, including you know, the, the full answer key, all the annotated labs, everything like that. Um, This is a private repo, which basically means that if you tried to go to the Cypher Education Instructor repository, you wouldn't be able to access it. Um, as many of you have pointed out in the chat already, that might be an issue if you want to use these labs in your classroom. So how we ask people to get in touch is to register as an instructor with us by emailing either Professor McDonald or I, um, by providing your institutional affiliation, your GitHub username so that we can actually add you to the repository, and just a little description of the courses that you wanna use the materials in, just so we can keep track of what people are doing and what kinds of resources people find helpful. Um, once you've registered with us, we'll add you as an outside collaborator to the organization. So you can access all of the materials that you wouldn't have been able to otherwise. So generally 
speaking, whereas the student repository just has kind of a, a very minimal amount of stuff that would just be necessary for the students to complete the lab, all of this extra content, including instructor versions, student versions, as well as source materials for actually creating and modifying the labs are available on the instructor repository. Okay, so now that all of that has been kind of cleared up and put out of the way, let's talk about actually contributing to cyber education and what that looks like. So there are two major ways of really contributing to our community. And the first of which is all online and you don't necessarily have to have any specialized understanding of what's going on uh, in a minute to, to participate in this way. GitHub is great because it allows us to collaborate across time zone and geographical distance and basically allows us to have discussions and really hash out what we want this community to be. Um, there are issues that people can raise if they find a, a, a typo or a problem or want to request some content. Um, but there's also these things called pull requests, which I'll talk more about in a minute. So we can have discussions on these pull requests and, and really iterate and make sure that the materials that we have available are high quality and realistic for students to be able to accomplish in class. The other way of contributing to Cypher Education is to directly contribute content, either by, you know, you find a typo or some error in an existing lab and you want to fix it up, or if you wanted to create a completely new resource, like all of the people that just gave lightning talks have done, and now they want to be able to contribute their uh, lab activities back to the community. Um, and I will mention that we have extensive contributor guidelines and code of conduct on the GitHub so that if ever you have any questions about this process, you can refer to those documents. Um, and I will point those out momentarily because instead of just going through slides of what this looks like, I'm actually going to try and demonstrate it. So GitHub kind of works using this version control software called Git. And Jeff Schreiber yesterday went through and described in detail how to contribute using Git and GitHub to Sci4 itself. And we actually use the exact same contribution model. So I want to I want to look at Sci4 Education. So this is the student-facing repository. Once you've registered as an instructor, you'll have access to this Cypher Education Instructors repository, which you should then, sorry, I'm minimizing the speaker window, which you should then be able to create a fork of this repository, which basically just takes this repo and makes a copy of it from our Cypher Education organization to your user. And so now this is your private sandbox in order to play and write new labs and try things out without endangering the materials that are more, uh, that are publicly available for everybody. Now, a lot of folks have kind of expressed trepidation about how to really write their labs, especially if they're new to writing Jupyter Notebook labs. Uh, and so we have a lab template that is available that kind of describes in detail the front matter and what kinds of stuff should be included in the instructor versions of the, uh, of the labs. And then, also demonstrate some of the capabilities like equation or um, markdown rendering that uh, that Jupyter Notebooks provide so that you can have all of the information that you would need in order to write 
your interactive labs. Now, I also at this point just want to point out where the code of conduct and contributor guidelines are. So inside the Cypher Education Instructor Repository is this hidden folder .github, inside which we have our code of conduct, a contributing guidelines, and our pull request template. Um, our contributor guidelines have a lot of great information and really kind of lay out what things you need to know in order to be an effective contributor to our project. So I won't just read that though, because I don't want to bore anyone. Instead, what I'm going to do is pop back over to my, go away, you know, my terminal. And what is happening is I'm in my instructors repository and I want to say make a new lab. So I'm going to go into the labs directory and I've already done this beforehand so it's like an infomercial. I'm going to make a new lab about linear algebra. Now, it seems like it would be easy, and it is easy, to copy the lab template into this directory and then open it up and start a new lab. But just like Jeff uh, would have talked about yesterday, I don't want to be on the master branch when doing that. So I'm going to say git checkout, and I already created this branch, linalg. And what I've done is from this lab template, I've created a detailed linear algebra lab in both instructor and student versions. And I really would like to, not this window. Um, I would like to open this. just to give you an idea of what's in here. So this is the instructor version. I've got my header where I give author and, and credit attribution. Uh, in the front matter, we've got instructor notes, including a summary of the activity, the prerequisites and learning objectives. This is kind of a longer lab, so I wouldn't expect it to be done in a single laboratory class activity, um, but it could also be assigned as a take home project. And then I'm not gonna go through any of this because this is going to be um, open in a pull request and publicly available momentarily. So if I come back over here to my, um, to my terminal and I'm in the linear algebra directory on my development branch linalg, I can ask, I should probably here. Once I've added and committed my changes, I can push them to my fork. and open a pull request. So what this is going to do is then request that the organization itself, Cypher Education, pull in my changes. So this pull request template um, asks you to fill in some basic information. So I'm gonna say the previous Linalg activity was basic, this one is detailed. And linear algebra. I don't have changes other than that. I don't have any questions. And 
my status I'm going to fill in as ready for review and merge. Now, over here on reviewers, I can actually ask to assign a reviewer. So I'm going to assign Ashley as a reviewer. And I'm going to label this. Oh, I guess we don't have label set up. Never mind. So I'm not going to label this. I've assigned Ashley as a reviewer and I'm going to click create my pull request. And once this happens, I can click inside the pull requests tab on the Cypher Education Instructor repository. And I can see what files have been changed. I can see what the commits are. But most importantly, I can engage in a conversation about what this lab has in it and what it, should it have in it. So I'm just going to say, looking forward to everyone's comments. And then members of the community can go through, look at my, um, look at my pull request, look at the changes that I proposed and weigh in on whether or not this is the type of change that they are hoping for. So I don't know if I can find my blue jeans window again without doing this. All right. So um, That's basically um, how to contribute your own content to Cypher Education. Now, as far as getting in touch is concerned, um, I mentioned that just email Ashley or I. Um, I will put the, or I've asked David if I can email him this slide deck to make available on, excuse me, on the SciCode website for the uh, for the meeting for SciCon 20. So you should all have access to this slide deck uh, momentarily. 